Death of a Doctrine, Tenets of the Heathen, Cyrus Schofield. So before I carry on reading anything about or out of this Schofield Reference Bible, I will, before I post this video, do a basic research on the man, get as many pictures as I can, and have as much support evidence so that way you, you know, I don't want you to agree with me. I want you to acknowledge what I'm saying. If you disagree with me, then please let me know and let me know why factually. Uh, many people have come to the comment section recently. Never had this issue before, but seeking to try to edify me with their opinion. I have my own opinion already. I don't need another opinion to fill my mind with. I need facts. So therefore, I can weigh it against what I already know and determine what it is that I know to either be false or more true. With that said, uh, this is out of the very first part. It's called the panoramic, panoramic view of the Bible. I'm going to start with the fifth one, which is the central theme of the Bible is Christ. It is this is it is this manifestation of Jesus Christ. One moment, his person, as this is in quotation, God manifest God manifest in the flesh. First Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen, his sacrificial death and his resurrection which constitute the gospel. I want you guys to listen to this because they try to confuse you with the wordplay. But they're going to say that everything that led up to him and then everything that proceeds following is what makes this true. I want you to listen to this. Unto this all preceding scripture leads to his death. From all this following, from this all following scripture proceeds of his death. This gospel is preached in the Acts and explained in the epistles. So, they're already, he limited, he limited the entire message of what he's saying, not into the Old Testament, but into the New Testament, number one. Number two, he limits it from the books of Acts and, to, and the epistles, not the entire uh, uh, um, um, New Testament, so to speak, or, or the Gospels of the New Testament. One moment. Um, Christ... Son of God, son of man, son of Abraham, son of David. Thus binds the many books into one. Now let's go ahead and point out two things. When Yeshua yet lived, he would always ask people, how am I the son of David? Right on? So how could that man imply that when Yeshua himself would always ask people, why do you consider me the son of David and I'm higher up? David's a prince and I'm a king. That's just a question. I don't mean nothing by it. Thus binds the many books into one book, which is not true. Seed of the woman, Genesis 3, 15. He is also the ultimate destroyer of Satan and his works. One moment, one moment. That man has assumed that Satan was the serpent. All in one. We all know that anybody who knows anything knows that Satan the serpent, the devil, the dragon are not the same. Thank you, Brother Baptized the Scribe. With that said, they say he is the seed of Abraham. He is the blesser of the world. Seed of David. He is Israel's king. One moment. That makes no sense because I just told you that the Messiah himself was like, how do y'all, why do y'all keep saying I'm from David when, bro, I'm a king in the in the spiritual realm and he's just a prince in the spiritual realm what are y'all talking about right i'm going to keep stressing little things like that that i understand about the scripture and though i don't be i don't, I don't have the reprobate mind to memorize every little thing so that way i can just memorize it i can go back to what i know about scripture and vaguely, uh, 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 what's the word, paraphrase, if you will, what I know to be true. And then you can contend with that. Um, excuse me. Desire of all nations. That's also in the quotations when it says the 
He is Israel's king. Exalted to the right hand of God is he. This is also in quotation. Head over all the church, which is in his body. When the fuck is that ever said? Ever. I'm just wondering. And I don't mean to be foul or vulgar. This is the real Demetrius, y'all. I swear I have a I have unclean lips. In the land of unclean lips. Excuse me. So sometimes I feel it's the only way to really stress how I'm feeling. Excuse me though if you have young ones listening and I just pardon words that you don't normally impart unto them. Please excuse the improper candor then. But I shall carry on. While to Israel and the nations the promise of his return forms the one and only rational expectation that humanity will yet fulfill itself. Did he hear that? One and only rational expectation. What? That humanity will fulfill itself. What could that be, y'all? And I'm going to break that down in a moment, too. And I'm going to break it down right now. See, that was a play on words. That was a heathen Gentile telling you that until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, he's not coming back. And I'll leave that alone. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the church looks momentarily for the fulfillment of his special promise. I, throughout this gospel age, bears testimony. That the the last book, one second, I was saying, I will come again and receive unto you myself. Excuse me, I don't know, I'm tripping. Uh, John uh, chapter 14, 1 through 3. To him, the Holy Spirit throughout the gospel age bears testimony. I don't know about all that. The last book of all, the consummation book, is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? That's the consummation book. Whoo, that's what makes it stick, makes it bind and hold. Wow. That's the we're going to lay in the bed together book. Wow. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelations 1 and 1. Please, while I carry on for one moment, just to point out some of the word tongue foolery of this man, Cyrus Schofield. He gets three parts, by the way. Because I have to touch up a few of the things in, 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 in the Old Testament, and then I had to just jump right to the New Testament. But we're going to break you know, Schofield's head right now. Um, I don't want his soul to rest in peace. I feel he's done enough evil. Let me read what he says about, uh, no, we're going to read that later. We're going to hold off on that. We're going to read this now. This is in Genesis, this is the very first chapter in, in the beginnings. We're going to read the subsection. And it says, Elohim, sometimes El or Elah, E-L-A-H. English form, quotation, God. The first of the three primary names of deity is a uniplural noun formed from El, which equals strength. Now, we all know that El is a Canaanite pantheon God. Once again, thank you, baptized scribe, my brother. Or the strong one. And listen to this. I can't make this up. Allah. A-L-A-H. To swear. To bind oneself by an oath. So implying faithfulness. This, unipl this unipolarity implied in the name is directly asserted in Genesis 1 as polarity in, in, in 126. And the 27, unity. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. What he tried to say just then, y'all, I'm going to explain two things. Because I'm going to have to I have to skip right to Genesis 6, and then I'm going to tell you why everything he's saying is a, it's a lie. He's trying to protect the identity of who the Gentiles are right now. What he's saying, right? And so now I'm about to give credence to, to a whole lot of people. What he's saying is that Allah, or Allah, whomever this being is, is a spiritual being. And El... Before El fell and became what he was, was also a spiritual being. I'm starting to understand the plight of the story, y'all. Listen and follow me. 
Don't get mad. Before these things fell, they were with the Most High, were they not? So let us, let's go ahead and use our minds for a moment. Let us make man in our image. So the us now is he's trying to say that this is the names of other deity, right? When in my understanding, with these this us, if anything, the us is the angels that are spoken on in Jude uh, uh, verse 6 and the sons of God that made it with the daughters of men, right? Also, this us could be the highest order of heavenly beings. Now, if this us is the first one that I spoke on, right, and they're just high holy ones, right, and they fell, well, what are the chances that one of these things, his name couldn't have not been El, and then another one, Allah, or Allah. I'm just throwing that out there. Anyhow, he tries to say that they all became one. That's not true. The Most High Jehovah, Yah, the Tetragrammaton is one. Only one. Now let me go ahead and skip forward. This unity, also in Genesis 3.22, nonsense, thus the Trinity is Lightning and Elohim, as meaning primarily the strong one. It is fitly used in the first chapter of Genesis, used in the Old Testament about 2,500 times. See? Now, you don't know if he's talking about Elohim or if he's talking about, man, you get what I'm getting at right now, y'all? They use the names of these fallen ones and the Elohim who, if you look at who the Elohim are supposed to represent, they're actually not good. Right. 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 It's weird how it works, huh? It's supposed to be righteous. I'm sure the real Elohim are righteous. But the Elohim that I know of are the Elohim that are blamed for the Anunnaki and giant monsters running around. So I'm thinking, is he speaking on the actual things that he's trying to disguise? Right. And throwing them in there as the gods or making the most high Yah, not one, but several things. And that's where they get the Trinity from. Do you see how he tried to make the Trinity right there in the Old Testament? Look at that. Pay attention. This is what's happening. This is how one man, once again, one man did this to the entire planet through the teachings of Paul. One moment. Then we got to go all the way to chapter, chapter six real quick. Man, it's about to go down, y'all. All right, so here we are. It says the flood, the marriage of Canaanites with Sethites. This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. He's implying right now, and it says, And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took to themselves wives of which all of, of all which they chose. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. He is saying that those people mating are the children of Cain and the children of Seth, and that's how they became mutated. That doesn't make any sense. Cain and Seth have the same parents. That doesn't make any sense on a biological note. I want y'all to think about that. And if Seth went out and had children with the same people that Cain went and had children with, how would their children mutate? Right. Seth's children called out on the name of, of the Most High first, but that didn't make them giants, and it didn't make them sons of God, right? Because in the Septuagint, the term sons of God is referred to as angels. And this man Schofield is trying to go against what was written well over 2,000 years ago in Greek text. So I, once again, you have to take what all these people are saying with the grain of salt. But listen to what he says down here in the subsection. And he tells the same story I told you earlier. Some hold that these sons of God, which is in quotation, were the angels which kept not their first estate from Jude 6, right? It is asserted that the titles, that the title in the Old Testament exclusively used of angels. But this is an error. Isaiah 43 Verse 6. Now, I want y'all to understand something. I'm about to take y'all to Isaiah 43, verse 6. So y'all get that I'm not trying to play no games. 
as to what this is trying to say to you. I'm going through my step two with it, y'all. I'm not, I'm not dealing with none of that. One second. There we go. Isaiah 46. No, 43 verse 6. One second. 45, 45, 43, and we're going to look for verse 6. One moment. One second. No, that can't be right. Let me make sure. Uh, you see, once again, sometimes when you go from the, the, the King James Version to the Septuagint, the verse lineup stuff don't be right, but I'm looking at 43 right now, right on, and it says, I will say to the north, bring, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from the land afar off, and my daughters uh, from the end of the earth. Even all who are called by my name, for I have pre prepared him for my glory, and I have formed him, formed him and have made him. And I have brought forth the blind people, and their eyes, for their eyes are alike blind, and they that have ears are deaf. One motion, one moment. How does that compare to that not being the angels? Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense that the angels don't have are sexless? Because I just read what Isaiah forty three just said. And that had nothing to do with it. And um, he tries to say, no female angels are mentioned in scripture. And we are expressly told the marriage is unknown among angels. Matthew tw uh, 22, verse 30. One moment. Uh, now, let me go ahead and say this right here. You don't always get the sense that the angel's a man. They're just told that you just read the scripture and it's an angel. And they're bowing down to the angel. Unless they describe that it's a male angel, you don't know it's a dude or not. Thank you very much. See what I'm saying? Are you hearing this? Mr. Schofield, may you turn over several times in the grave. Several. And may you burn in hell. Because I got something more for your ass. Part two coming up, y'all. I'm telling you, the death of this sorry ass doctrine. One moment. One second. And I'm going to uh, come back with part two with some fuego, with some straight fuego. I'm ready. I hope y'all are ready.